If you were to visit Japan at the beginning of May, you would find the air around you filled with flying fish. Wind socks, shaped like carp and known as koinobori, are flown in honor of Children's Day. The carp is considered the strongest and most courageous of fish because it fights the currents upstream. Flying koinobori outside of a home is a tradition to honor the children so that they will grow up healthy and strong as well. I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful koinobori that can swim through the breezes at your home or your school. I begin with a piece of smart fan. This is a waterproof, synthetic material available in many colors. It's super strong and it's outdoor safe. I also have a small block of EcoCarve block printing material onto which I've drawn a scale shape pattern. Using linoleum cutters and a bench hook for safety, I carve a scale shape so that the raised areas that are left make the design I want to print. These tools are sharp, so I'm careful to keep my fingers behind the cutter and cut away from myself. Next, I fold the fabric in half vertically and from a point about four inches from the fold, I'm going to cut a curved line to form the belly of the fish. I'll save those scraps for making the tail later. I plan for the mouth by leaving about two inches here at the top. Then mark the eye placement. The fabric is translucent so I can fold it back over and mark the other eye in exactly the same spot. Open it up, make sure you have paper towels underneath it. Here's the finished block cut. I'm going to brush acrylic paint evenly over the top of it, then press down to make my first scale. Repeat this multiple times. Not every print will turn out perfectly. And that's okay. Once the scales cover the entire body, I'll embellish the design with acrylic paint. This step shows the painting in progress with some white paint and also some metallic gold paint. My next example shows the finished fish. That beautiful iridescent glow is Sparkle Mod Podge. Now while this would be drying, I would take the scraps I saved, paint them, and cut them to make tail pieces. To make the mouth, I folded the top over and used a blunt needle and heavy thread to stitch a line across, leaving plenty of thread at the end. Now I open a book ring and feed it through the pocket I've created. One more stitch holds the mouth closed. The last part of the assembly requires a line of strong craft glue just along the belly of the fish. Press it closed, then take the tail pieces place a dot of glue on all sides insert it and use a paper clip to hold it closed while it dries. Once the glue is dry, it can be tied onto a dowel like a pole or hung up to fly. If it will be outdoors, I do recommend using wire because it will provide more strength than the thread. Full-size 
point abori kites such as these can be made following the same exact steps. Just use more fabric, a larger scale, and a macrame hoop for the mouth. You can view these instructions, design ideas for making the scales, teaching standards, and more at dickblick.com backslash lesson plans.